Yeah, co coherence is a resonance, a form, a pattern of resonance which is undiluted by time. Undiluted. Undiluted by time. Right? Not, it, it's not dissipated. It doesn't go away. It doesn't fade with time. It doesn't age. It's ageless. It's transcend, transcendent of time. It exists through time without end. And that is a sign in this these dimensions, a sign of transcendence. Okay, that it's connecting its nature to a higher order in which time, there is no temporal uh, constraint. All times exist now. You know, in God's consciousness, of which we are a cell. So this is the state in which we aspire to, to comprehend our experience and to apply uh, our gifts mm -hmm. through, through wisdom. That's where a model, if a model is more complete, if we're not <laughs> leaving out pitfalls and, and sharp things in the dark, <laughs> you know, and if we're incorporating all the major experiences in our spectrum of, of earthly experience, that's a useful model. Where we leave, leave out parts, for example, if we leave out God and consciousness in our model of this world, and it just came from a big bang, which came from nothing. Well, how many times does a Big Bang happen in, in how many billions of years in this model have existed? And it never happened again, even when there was stuff. So how, how when there wasn't anything, no energy, no space, no, no space or time in which the energy could, you know, be hiding. <laughs> it wasn't there waiting to, to show itself. Where did it come from? It's already in that model, we it, it can't we cannot we cannot accept that a four dimensional model will be able to accurately and fully uh, define our four dimensional experience if we think that all of the source of it could be coming from another essentially undefined. Uh, undefined set of of, of alternate uh, dimensions. Otherwise, we can't look at this creation, this universe, and and say the conservation of energy is a law. It's not a law if there was no energy because there's no space time and time for, in which it could exist, suddenly taking a quantum, the ultimate quantum leap of the Big Bang. Right. Where did it come from? When, you know, where, where was time before that? <laughs> Well, it's it, it's a model that that it's it's a uh, you know, it's it's a map that that just fits you know some of the quite a bit of the the uh, the data that of what we can see through telescopes. We look at the telescopes, and, and and the data largely fit this map, but yet there are. There are things out, we see out there that are not explained in, in that map. And as we see, begin to see those discrepancies, now we need to fill in a, a gap in, in our map and say, well, there's something there, but we can't see it, so we'll call it dark matter. There's, there's something going on here, but we can't see it, so we'll call it dark energy. And, and, and now this model has been, you know, adjusted in, in you know, many different
different ways in that way to keep it as a best fit model to our experience. But again, there's there's parts of the experience that that keep busting out of the model, saying, well, yeah, but it won't work over here. Now, that model is, is essentially a gravitational model, but yet electromagnetism that's essentially left out of, of that model, ignored, as if it's a short, you know, only acts at short distances, and the only thing acting at long distances is, is gravity, but yet the Electromagnetic forces are, I forget how, I'll need to remember the, the number, uh, if it's a thousand times, no, it's more, it's, it's like, maybe it's even billions of times. Gotta look that up, how much stronger electromagnetism is than gravity. So, right. Gravity may simply be a, just a special aspect of, it. Well, ultimately it is one, you know, they're looking for the unified field theory of how of the four different forces are, are what's the underpinnings of all four? Uh, but that, it's a it's an open question. The the what I the best piece I've found to plug into that question because to me the, having a model that has you know eight or ten gaping large open questions where we're just going to say well we don't know we're not going to talk about that <laughs> we have this model of a piece here, but we don't know how it answers these other big questions, like you know, an not answering where space, time, matter, and energy all came from suddenly. And yeah, um, so th there's there's certainly the one possibility being that in alternate dimensions there's a reverse flow of time in relation to the t flow of time that, <coughs> that we experience. And that when there is, in those instances where there is cross-communication between those dimensions, that can be a source of, of, of private revelation, of, of prophecy, uh, messages from a direction of experience counter to our own would give us information about the future, which from these dimensions, the perspective of these dimensions alone, is quite impossible for us to to know clearly. Yet we can anticipate, we can predict, and that's that's all that science is, is an attempt to predict future, to be able to change and alter and manipulate future, to control. So predict and control of course, communication that transcends time, that comes from a dimension traveling in reverse time, would uh, ultimately uh, have the potential to give us a perfect, perfectly coherent uh, fit to our timeline just like I could tell someone with perfect, uh, a level of perfection of knowledge of my past, of my experience. 